Hello, everybody, and welcome to the December 1st edition of Press Box. This is John Carter, and we're very pleased today to have Dave Klutz and players from his uh, St. Clair varsity, base, or varsity tennis team. Uh, we got Ryan Maben. Ryan, we've got Seth Pino, we've got Sean McCormick, and we've got um, Garrett Vigneron. Guys, welcome. Dave, another great year for St. Clair tennis. Can you tell me a little bit about how the season went? Yeah, it was, it was a really fun year this year. Uh, we had a lot of returning players, um, kids that have worked hard over the years. And uh, we had, this was our 18th straight season going to the state finals, um, regional champs again, and uh, we accomplished most of our goals this year, top 10 in the state, and um, also winning our first Mac Red match. So it was a real good year. You mentioned Mac Red, and I always thought it was interesting that uh, you, you, you play up. And for people who aren't familiar with the Mac, it, it's, it's based usually on population students as well as your record. Mm -hmm. But you've always voluntarily played up in a higher division. Yeah, in the, uh, in the girls, we've been playing up in the Mac Red for probably the last 12 years. Um, for the guys, we moved up last season. We had been in the Red before, mm -hmm. but um, those years, the guys just didn't respond to that challenge. And this group, I knew that they would, and they've shown us that. Mm -hmm. So we, we play up even though we're the smallest school, but we play up to get us prepared for the state finals. Sure, because you're seeing very strong teams, I would think, and that's what you're going to see as you move Absolutely. farther around in the states. Every, every school in the MAC Red goes to the state finals in their respective divisions, and that's why we go there to get prepared. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about how high school tennis works. I mean, I'm not sure everybody understands kind of logistics of it. Can you explain that? Right. Well, the, one of the questions that I get most frequently is, who on your team qualified for the state finals? And I explain to them it, it doesn't work that way as an individual. It's actually a team sport. And so a team is made up of 12 uh, players. We have four singles players and then four doubles teams. And so you either play singles or you play doubles, depending on where you fit in the lineup. And so when we play another school, we'll put our, our one singles player against their one singles and two singles against their two and so on, and then the same with doubles. And so each win against an opposing player is a point for your team. Now, are there ever any games played? In other words, uh, you, you see somebody kind of trick up their lineup a bit? Yeah, well, there's actually a rule in tennis where y you have to have your best player on the team play one singles, okay. and then everybody has to be in, in rank order of ability. And what we call in tennis is stacking if uh, a team is not in its right order. And that's actually against the rules. Okay. okay. So what you mentioned uh, you know, many, many years in a row mm -hmm. in the States, a tremendous accomplishment. Tell me a little bit about how you sustain that program. I mean, the thing about high school, it's four years and, and they're gone. It is, and uh, it's, it's crazy when I tell the story. My first year that um, I took over the program, we, we did not win a single match. And uh, that, the reason was is the year before, the team had won regionals under uh, Coach Stablin, but he had graduated nine of the ten starters. So when I took over, we were raw. And um, I had a young team, and they, they just continued, and we just seemed to get those, those players playing over the years. If they don't make it their freshman year, then they're going to be better their sophomore year. And it just seems like we have players that are rolling in and get better, and so that's how we're able to sustain it. That's, that's, it's really it's a tremendous story, and congratulations on it. So, so, so guys, tell me a little bit about um, I mean, how you started. What, uh, uh, you know, what was your first time playing, playing tennis, Sean? I think, and my brother was previously on the team. Okay, and he's the one that really got me going because I want I want to be better than him. <laughs> uh, Are you? I think now. <laughs> it's a big thing, I know. I mean, at what point you say you're you're, you're better than your older brother? Uh, what about you? Um, my mom just kind of signed me up one year, and I always thought it was for sissies. Like you got to play football, <laughs> guy. And me and Garrett signed up together and kept kept playing. Okay. So, Garrett, what do you like most about playing high school tennis? What's, what's been the most enjoyable thing? Uh, I like the individualism about okay. the sport. Were you one of the singles players? Yeah, I was a single player. Okay. So what does that mean? What, I mean, it, uh, obviously, there's no, there's no one else on the court but you yeah, at that point. It's, just, it's all on me. I feel like I do better when I'm alone. Uh, I haven't really played doubles before, but... I get the technique of singles a little more than doubles. Okay. Okay. I'm not a net player at all. <laughs> so you guys, you watch a lot of the pros. Uh, Seth, is there anybody in, in, in the pros you like to imitate that you, you kind of pattern your game after? I think I like Roger Federer's game a lot. I mean, okay. he has really nice ground strokes and always is able to finish the points well. Okay. 
He's elegant. Are you an elegant <laughs> player? I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably on the way there. I'm still working at it, though. Okay. All right. So tell me a little bit. Of what, you know, uh, what are, what's your strongest shot, would you say? Definitely up with the net. Yeah? It's put away. Okay. It's a lot easier than rallying it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. So, Seth, you, you, you mentioned you, you like Federer, but are, do you yeah. like coming in, or do you try to uh, stay back more? Uh, I like to come in, but you got to wait for the right time to do so. You got to work the point out, and then when the right shot shot comes, you got to move in and finish the point at the net. What? A, tell me one thing that, that people who you mentioned the football thing, but what what's one thing that people who don't play a lot of tennis at your level, where it's actually competitive high school tennis, don't understand what it takes to be a good tennis player? Sean? Um, I mean, it's more frustrating when. Uh, you like you know how good you can be, and it's frustrating when uh, like you don't do as good. And I don't think football players actually, or like anybody really understands like the amount of time that you put into it, and it just can be frustrating sometimes. Okay. Like, you know. It's a it's it's a mental. Yes, exactly. A mental yeah. emotional thing. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I think uh, if you watch, obviously in singles, it's it, it's something you're you're the only person. There's no one else to. To blame, right? Yeah. And then that, that was, that's got to make it pretty tough. And Garrett, what about you? What, 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 what's, what's the thing you think that people don't understand about tennis the most? Uh, well, I think just like Sean, it takes a lot of. You have to be mentally strong. Okay. And you're you can't really uh, count on your team to like lean on you because they're not really playing the match. They can cheer you on and pretty much just talk to you before the matches and help mentally help you. But when you're on the court, no one else can help you. Okay. Dave, it's an interesting point that a couple of your players made about the, the mental, emotional aspects of it. I mean, how do you coach a tennis team in high school? It is very individualistic. I mean, what's, 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 your, what's your process? You know, you've got 12 different personalities. And it's, it's an individual sport to a lot of, you know, especially the singles part. But you have to know what motivates, you know, each player individually and what doesn't work. And so you're, you constantly kind of have your psychology hat on. <laughs> and uh, as the kids pointed out, I mean, it, it, it truly is such a mental sport. You just beat yourself up. And so you've got to keep kids thinking in the right direction. You can't worry about the point that just ended. The only thing you can control is the next point. So how do you choose uh, who's going to be your number one player? I mean, I know you say it's supposed to be the best player, right. but that can be pretty subjective at times. Well, what's nice about tennis and other sports is, uh, compared to the other sports, that is a little more subjective. In tennis, I can just make them go play. Okay. And whoever wins, wins. You know who's better. And, and we have challenge matches. That's, that's part of the process of creating your team. And you actually have to document those challenge matches in case another coach questions your lineup. That's interesting, yes. just to make sure that you got the top players. Right. So, I mean, what about doubles and singles? I mean, it, 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 is this something you choose as they come into the program? Do the kids have a preference? How does that work for that? I usually ask when, you know, when I hold tryouts, I usually ask who wants to play singles and who wants to play doubles. And, and that isn't the end all. Um, sometimes you have a, a kid who you just know is a better doubles player, has better doubles skills, and they're not singles players. And I can, on this team right here, I mean, you know, Garrett said it right as himself, that he, he was more of a singles player, and his game fits that. Ryan and Sean are excellent players in their own right, but they work better as a doubles team, and they like playing doubles. That's interesting. So let's, let's, let's continue with you two. So what does make you a, a good uh, doubles team, do you think, Sean and Ryan? What, what, what characteristics has made this team work? Uh, I think we've been playing since freshman year together, kind of, and 10th grade year was our first year, like, playing doubles on the varsity level, and I think our chemistry, have just, our chemistry has just grown from there. Tell me more about that. What, what does that, what that mean? Agree with him. Like, we know that we've been playing with each other since like freshman year when we started playing with each other, and so we know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and we kind of just build off of that. Like, if he's not good at that, then I'll get good at it, and I'll help him out. And if I'm not good at something, he got good at it, and then we just kind of help each other out. Okay. I've always wanted to ask, though, so are there anything any foibles that uh, Ryan had that drive you nuts? Um, I could say we both can get pretty angry at some <laughs> Um I mean, and that's just part of the game. I mean, you're always going to get angry, but um, I'd say that was one of our, at least 
I mean, I know I got pretty angry at some points. I'm, I'm sure that's what Ryan would say too. But so, Ryan, I mean, can you remember a, a, a time? <laughs> um, there's, there's a couple times where like we both weren't playing well. We kind of take it out on each other. Like in regionals a couple years ago, it happened where we were just mad at each other. We started yelling at each other. But next point, you know, you got to keep going. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It, some of the best doubles teams are brothers, but some. Are and sisters, right? But, right. And, and some aren't. I mean, uh, it would seem to me that uh, do your comp your personalities kind of complement each other, or are you very similar? I'd say we're, we're pretty similar. similar. We're pretty similar. Like, right. and that, that's actually important for us as, as the coach um, that we have to put kids together that we know can complement each sure. other, not only game wise, but but mentally. Yeah. And it's it's good to have kids that, that get along with one another. Yeah, well, and, and I know you guys had a terrific year, uh, uh, all area, you know, congratulations. And another, uh, Seth, uh, you also, uh, uh, all area, uh, and uh, honorable mention all state. So tell me a little bit about your game. What's, what, what do you think your strengths are right now? Uh, I'd probably say my ground strokes are my best strengths. I work on them, you gotta work the points out and get the ball where, um, like where you want it to go so you can finish the point. Mm -hmm. And uh, mentioning you, you always kind of get the other team's ace and, mm -hmm. and a, a number one starter, so to speak. How do you psych yourself up for those types of, you know, what you know is going to be a tough player? Yeah, you just got to get yourself, like, mentally prepared and expect anything. You got to want to play your best and be determined to get every point because you never know what can happen. So you're going to be a senior next year. What goals are you going to have for 2016? Uh, I want to have one of, the, like, the best teams I've ever had, and I want to make it pretty far at State. It's about the best I, I can do and hopefully okay. get seated. One of the things about tennis is you know who's out there probably, right, right, right now. Mm -hmm. is there, are there a couple of players you're, you've already kind of identified as, as people you want to beat for next year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are they from? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Hopefully I can beat Northern. Okay. Maybe Northern. And let's see, a bunch of other teams at States I can hopefully overcome. Yep. So, Garrett, one of the interesting things about uh, – boys tennis is that it's kind of a reverse season sport and what I mean by that is we were talking earlier you think about baseball the weather gets better as you go far along so by the time you get the states or, or the regionals you're likely to have the best weather boys tennis is really kind of the opposite if anything the weather gets worse and worse how do you deal with with you know really cold temperatures or something like that when you're when you're playing uh, well I just dress warm and I find myself in instances to find a car that's warm too to <laughs> warm up. And I, at the Dakota tournament, actually, the bathrooms were heated. Really? <laughs> and it was connected to the locker, the football locker room was open too. Okay. So you could just go in there and stay warm, I guess. I just found a smart way to get warm. <laughs> oh, that's good because it's, it's not like, you know, Wimbledon or, or, uh, or uh, U.S. Open where people are worried about the heat. It, no. or, it, it can be just the opposite. We had some weather this year that was not only really, really cold, but really, really windy. Okay. And that's, that's the thing that struggles, you know, for most tennis players, they have to struggle with. Garrett, how do you play in the wind? What, what, what do you try to do? <laughs> I don't play. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you have to be really careful about putting your shot, like placing it perfectly. And I had a problem with that because I would try too hard to just hit winners and then when it when the wind is brought on me, then those shots will go out, sure. and it's just very tough to play in the wind. Yeah. Do you like serving with the wind or playing against it? Uh, playing against it. Really? Yeah. Because you, you don't it have to. It won't go long, right? Yeah, it, it gives me a better margin there. Okay. So I want to ask you guys, you know, uh, kind of the leaders of the team, what do you do for fun? I mean, it can get, I would think, fairly boring knocking the ball over the net continuously. What, what are some of the things your team has done for fun this year? Uh, we go out to eat a lot, actually. <laughs> <Really>? After <laughs> tennis practices, we'll hang out at each other's houses sometimes. We actually have a group chat with all of us in it. And throughout the season, I couldn't tell you how many times I woke up in the morning with at least like 50 texts. <laughs> oh, We're always cool. texting in that with each other. So. As, as, as number one doubles, what are your responsibilities for the, I would think the, 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 the lower doubles teams or some of the young kids, how do you help them? Uh, mainly to set an example, listening to coach and doing whatever coach needs us to do and just primarily to set an example for the other people. What do you make the freshmen do? They go get the balls. <laughs> yeah, they can get the balls out of practice and put them away or get the water jug filled up <laughs> for matches. Good. Well, 
I guess the other question is, you know, they've mentioned, how many years was it again? 18. 18 years. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's probably longer than you guys have been alive <laughs> for most of you. Do, you. do you think about the street? Do you think about making the, the states or, or not? To be honest, I, I haven't. No, I've been pretty, haven't. I know we were worried the first year we were all on varsity about uh, winning regionals. But I think we had a, we knew that we were going to get to states. <laughs> well, at least I did. Yeah, we're pretty confident. Well, that's good. Yeah. You, you had a pretty good idea who was out there, who was going to be the competition. And uh, so, Dave, how, how does that, how is that determined? I mean, the, what the, teams make it? Well, the state sets the regionals. The MHSA will okay. determine, based on geography, who's in the regionals. And then the top two teams out of each regional move on to the state finals. So I, I want to say there's eight Division three regionals, which is what we're in. And so technically 16 teams will make it to the state finals out of 85. Um, and then it's possible for a third team to qualify if they score enough points at regionals. It doesn't happen often, but it did happen. Um, it happened this year too, didn't it? We had 24. Yeah, and then last year we actually had four teams make it out of our regional wow. just because there was a lot of them tied with enough points to qualify, but that doesn't happen often. And, it, and a one good individual player? The only, the only thing is just a number one singles player. Okay. And they, they're the only ones who can qualify as an individual, and they have to make it to the regional final. Okay. Um, so that's, and that does happen. You'll get some players in that'll do that. Um, but mainly, you know who the top teams are in the area. Okay. Well, listen, guys, thanks. I really enjoyed uh, finding out a little bit about it. Dave, I've got to ask, though, mm -hmm. what about 2016? Does the streak continue? I think so. We've okay. got, we're we're going to reload for next year, no doubt. We've, we're going to miss our seniors and guys that have been around in the program for three, four years. Um, but we've got new kids coming up. And we've also started a middle school program, which oh, okay. helps develop kids as they, they come you know, into our into the high school setting. Oh, that's terrific. Well, listen, again, congratulations both to you and to your team. Another Thank you. terrific year for St. Clair Tennis. And uh, uh, hopefully again, next year we'll have you right back uh, here again, right? We look forward to it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that wraps up our Press Box for today. This is John Carter saying thank you and see you next week. <laughs> Great job.